Hello, this is Mrs. James. We are continuing our end of the course review. This is Nuclear Chemistry Part 2. Last time we talked, we were looking at radioactive decay, and we were looking at graphs of radioactive decay, saying that with each half-life, half of the parent material that was left would decay into the daughter material. We are using specifically the example of copper decaying into zinc, but we could use this for any radioactive decay. So after one half-life has passed, half the material is still the parent material, referred here as the radioactive nuclei. After the second half-life, half of that half is left. So half of it decays, half of it remains. So now we're down to 25%, or one quarter. At the end of the third half-life, a, a half of that quarter has turned, so we're left with an eighth. After the fourth half-life, we're left with a sixteenth. Looking here, all we're seeing here is a variety of different half-lives and a variety of different elements. So this is just a few of the many isotopes of elements that will go through half-life. We're looking at fractions of seconds, full seconds, longer than seconds. We can go from some elements that have a half-life of less than a second to elements that have half-lives of hundreds of thousands of years. Let's talk a little bit about the application. I know you've studied in the past about how we can use uh, nuclear radiation in our society. And let's just briefly go over that again. All right, these are not uses yet, but again, I want to keep talking about that idea of half-life. Some elements go through radioactive decay more quickly than other ones do. And this is a key to understanding how we can use radioactive materials in industry, and in making energy generation, like the electricity in your house, how we can treat things like cancer, and how we can diagnose things, whether it's a medical condition or diagnose a flaw, say, in a dam at a lake. So these are some of the very many things that will go through radioactive decay, the isotopes. I'm talking here about the kind of decay. We learned last time about the difference between alpha and beta decay. If you didn't see the last video, you can find it on YouTube and um, we'll have instructions for that uh, written out for you later on. Looking here at a variety of different half-lives, this is four and a half billion years for a half-life. That's how long that is. All the way down to 8.1 days. All right. Now that we're reinforcing the ideas that different elements have different half-lives, in other words, some of them decay for a long period of time, some of them decay very, very quickly, and then are no longer radioactive, let's talk about uses. All right, here we have radioisotopes, in other words, radioactive isotopes in medicine. Um, we are not going to go over all of these. You surely don't have to have them all memorized. We're just getting a basic idea here. We can use it to treat medical conditions, such as cancer, or sterilizing medical equipment. Um, here is an example of bismuth-213, which has a 46-minute half-life. It's used for a specific type of radiation treatment for some cancers. It's very high energy. 46 minutes is a good half-life for this kind of a treatment because you don't want that person leaving the treatment center and still being experiencing the effects of that radiation. You want that radiation and its effects to take place while the person is in the treatment room. All right. Here's an example of a different material which has a longer half-life. This is 9.4 days. This is used for relieving arthritic pain in some joints. Well, it's better to have a slightly longer half-life because we want this treatment to continue working after the person has left the treatment center. Here's an example of uh, a material with a half-life of 74 days that's used for cancer treatment. Notice here it says used and then removed. This material is actually implanted inside the person it's in the form of a wire, so it's put under their skin close to the tumor. We want this um, source of radiation to keep working inside this person for a number of days for the maximum effect. So these different types of cancer treatment are using materials with specific different half-lives because that's the best for the particular treatment they're doing. In other words, people who design cancer treatments will intentionally choose materials with different half-lives. All right, 
Here we have a few more. Here's one with 17 days. And again, this has an implant seed. That means that this material is actually put inside the person so that it's continuing to release that radiation for 17 days for a longer term treatment of this particular cancer, which is prostate cancer. Now here's one that only has a half-life of 15 hours. This is for studying the electrolytes within the body. So say that we want to study the electrolytes inside of a person. We want that half-life to be short because we want that radioactive decay to be done quickly. We don't need this person having this radioactive material still acting on their body days later. We just want to learn something about them. So we use something that uh, will really model and follow the person's digestive system. All right, now it's not just medicine. We can also use radioactive materials in industry. Uh, gaining information that we can't gain in other ways, sterilizing things. So there's lots of different reasons why we would use radioactive materials when we're building and creating things. All right, key to this is this idea right here, that even very small quantities of radioactive material can be de detected very easily. This means we can use them to trace things. I used to work at a water plant that uh, prepared water from a reservoir to be then sent out to people for their drinking water. So it was the water that would go through the pipes. Sometimes the dam at our reservoir would get leaks in it, and it was very hard to find the leaks. What we would do is we would put a little bit of radioactive material inside the water close to the dam, and then we would go out with a, a, um, a detector and called a Geiger counter, which I think you've heard of, and we would take it over to the other side of the dam, and where the water that was radioactive was coming through the dam, the Geiger counter would pick up that signal. So it let us find very small leaks in the dam very quickly and easily using a material that had a very short half-life. We didn't want this half-life to be any more than a couple hours. We just wanted it to last long enough for us to find the leaks in the dam. Now, it also wasn't a very dangerous uh, radioactive material that we were using. We used this for the water, but you could also do this inside the body. So we can use a radioactive material with a short half-life to trace how, say, food would pass through a person's body if we're trying to find um, medical problems. All right, we can also use radioactive materials that have already decayed to find out how long old things are. So we know how long the half-life is of carbon-14. So we can find an old piece of wood, and we can measure how much carbon-14 it has. That's our parent material and how much daughter material there is. And we can use that to find how old that wood is. Okay. We can use that for old wood, so things that are up to 20,000 years old. That's because carbon-14 has such a long half-life. Chlorine-36, we can use this to measure the age of water that's maybe even older. So if we find, for instance, an ice sample, we want to know how old it is. We can use lead-210 to date layers of sand and soil that are up to 80 years old, so it has a shorter half-life. So we can, use, um, we can use radioactive materials that have already decayed to learn also. All right, here's a few more areas that there is radioactive decays used that you may not have been aware of. Smoke detectors use radioactive material. Um, we can use it to study erosion in sand, so we can use it as a tracer to study the blood flow inside a person. We can use it for sterilizing. In fact, it's widely used, cobalt-60 in this case, is widely used for sterilizing things in hospitals and in industries. We can use it to, uh, in this case, gold-198. We can use it to study the flow of sewage and liquid waste. So again, we're using it as a tracer. We want to use something that has a pretty short half-life, but this helps industries find leaks and fix them. And again, studying coastal erosion. All right, now, these things are going to obviously cause a, uh, a waste that might be radioactive, especially if the half-life is longer, and that may be dangerous to the workers or to the public or could control the uh, damage to the environment. So we have to be pretty careful about that. And the last thing I want to talk about is how some processes simply are going to be contaminated because our world has radioactive materials. So some industries don't uh, intentionally use nuclear radioactive material,
but they still might have contamination.